transforming back from agile to traditional top-down management. Hi, my name is John Behrens and on Skills for Teams you're going to learn about methods and technologies to develop software and other products. Make sure to follow me on social media and don't hesitate to put your comments under this video to support this channel. Yeah, and today I'm here in Bremen and I'm going to talk about experience I made in a project where a completely agile company was transitioned back to enterprise-driven top-down management. And how did it happen? I was visiting the company, they offering a, a website for holiday homes uh, where you can rent holiday homes and this site was pretty successful they were owner-led so the owner was also the manager and they had a lot of complete self-organization they used agile they used okrs and they used a lot of metrics where everybody was seeing how the company is doing on big monitors but what happens then is one day the owner decided to sell his company to an india-based big large enterprise and they overtook those company actually at that time the company from india was taking a lot of holiday offering portals organizations companies in europe also a danish company say it's another story but they also fucked it up in another way so what happened was like all the employees who were used to self-organize who were used to bring their ideas into the company and made it a success where yeah, threatened they didn't feel well anymore because there were new managers and they didn't understand the agile culture. They were introducing a top-down management, controlling, dictating ideas. The projects which were driven by the employees were not going forward anymore. And what happened is people went unhappy. Their, um, their ability to work, their performance went down. The best people left the company first and that's always what happens if company drives towards stress if you change culture in a bad way people will leave the company and the best people will leave first not the low performers the people who bring the performance the people who bring the ideas so if you ever overtake another company you need to ensure that the people who were Break, bringing the most power where had the best ideas and moving everything forward they will be yeah, included and they will be involved and that's what they failed in like they were not involving the people everybody has fear that the new owners gonna <laughs> reduce stuff gonna fire stuff so the first people who had the best chance on the market they went to another company finally also the people w which were my partners with whom i worked together were searching for a new job I think one was the first going, he was scrum master of my team at the time. I was a tester there and of course this company had some legacy software and they were trying to some refactoring and also building a new part of the system. But this project were stacking at the moment was a management change and they couldn't drive forward that direction. So also finally my contract wasn't extended as I did not understand uh, that we were actually yeah, a critical part of this one and they wanted to get most money out of the company and not invest in innovation and reducing technical debt. So what, what it ended up with most people I know there left the company, also some new people joined the company, like developers from India were flying over to, to Bremen, this place, and I know these guys were actually Java developers who needed to join PHP World and I was working with them together and it was also interesting in a cultural way. Another interesting part was when the new developers from India joined and they actually fly over and lived in Bremen for a time. And uh, I also trained them a bit in PHP and helped along getting uh, yeah, along in Bremen and to get used to German culture. So that was more like a cultural question. But yeah, the fact that this company who was completely self-organized they had like i did not do not know i think they used holacracy so self-organized framework for making decisions and they went to a top-down management position and the new owners were not able to understand the culture and that's why they yeah did not use the advantage they didn't move forward everything went backward people were disappointed the product I think it also went worse, you hear less of that company anymore, they were not able to adapt the challenges. 
the Danish company they bought also had a big problem in understanding their business and actually uh, they used a lot of market capital uh, or market um, yeah, place at the market they went down and it's not popular anymore that company so yeah they lost everything by not getting into the culture they need they didn't understand the advantage of HR and that's why why I yeah say it's always good to understand HR it's good how it works and in a fast growing and adaptable market with a lot of changes you always have an advantage going with an HR culture where you use bottom-up approach where you hear for your employees hear what they tell you and they can bring up their ideas they can bring up what's needed and that's the best factor for success if you just yeah buy a company and don't understand how it works it mostly fails at this point yeah it was sad for the employees for me as a contractor i went to the next project but if you are in the same situation take care try to get on a better way so that was my experience of the company and the most sad thing about it they self called themselves traum so that's the german word for dream and before it was for the employees a dream company they were successful on the market and afterward it was also a dream company but more in case of a nightmare oh that was a dream story from Bream, the dream which went into an agile nightmare and if you want to hear more stories about agile learn more facts about agile join my channel subscribe it and if you like a t-shirt like this t-shirt do it agile no excuses then Check the link in the description and go to my t-shirt shop.